Hey, Coach. How are you, brother? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, dude. I know you're busy and got a lot going on with all the chaos and everything happening. There's a lot going on, you know, and um, you know, hopefully people are getting through it. And, uh, you know, thank God for the first responders and all the, you know, essential workers that are out there helping us out. So we really appreciate them. Amen, brother. Amen. So tell me about your background, man. How'd you grow up? You know, I had, luckily, you know, I had both parents in the home and you know, I had two brothers. I, I'm the middle of three boys and uh, my younger brother passed away six years ago, but we grew up, you know, with three boys and um, mom and dad. My uh, grew up in Kent, Ohio, up in Northeast Ohio, where Kent State's at. We ended up moving to Colorado when I was a senior in high school. But we had, I mean, I thought we had everything we needed. You know, I wouldn't say we were rich by any by any stretch of the imagination, but um, but we had everything that we needed. And so I never thought that I didn't. I never thought that that we weren't rich. <laughs> you know, because like I said, we we had everything and. Um, yeah, you know, I think we were in a regular old household that we were held accountable for our actions. And, um, and, but never once did we ever have to wonder, if, you know, if our parents loved us or cared about us. And, um, you know, we grew up in an athletic house. And my dad played in college and played a little bit in the league and in the NFL and became a high school coach. Um, my older brother became really, didn't really get into football, but he became a professional tennis player and, and did that for quite some time. And, um, you know, played in, played in college, played in tennis in college. And then obviously I played football and, you know, growing up, um, was a ball boy. Started, went on the sideline with my dad from the time I was like four years old because he was a coach as well in high school. And then, um, you know, as I progressed through, you know, through the sport and into playing, playing in college, had a, had a short, short stint in the NFL when I tried out. And, uh, my younger brother played all kinds of sports. We all did, but he ended up playing college football as well, Colorado State, after I did. Um, but he was a phenomenal basketball player too. So very athletic household. Um, I'd like say my mom ran it all, you know, <laughs> she, she was kind of, she was kind of the one that ran it all for us. So, but, um, but no, I mean, I, I grew up, I, I think I had a great childhood growing up. Dude, you just got coaching in your blood, huh? I know all I know. Was your dad's dad a coach? My father's, um, dad, who I'm, who I'm named after actually, um, you know, he only had like a ninth, ninth grade education and he worked in the steel mills and uh, Wintersville, Ohio, and um, was a was a strong, strong man. You know, he passed away when I was six, but I still remember him. I have vivid memories of my grandfather. Um, but my dad grew up with seven brothers and sisters, um, four boys, three girls, all four, all four of my, well, my dad and my three uncles, they all played division one football at Purdue, um, Oregon. West Virginia, and then my dad played, obviously, at Kent State. Um, so, you know, we've got generations of just playing ball and, and, and playing sports. And um, But they're all very, very successful in their, you know, after college. One uncle was an engineer. Another one was a dentist. was one of the only two black dentists in all of Detroit before he passed away years back. And, um, and my dad was a, you know, was an educator and ended up, before he retired, was assistant superintendent, or I should say, director of personnel in District 11 schools out in Colorado Springs. So, um, so I kind of grew up in a, in a uh, athletic household, but also um, education was paramount. And my grandmother was a teacher for many, many, many years, as was my aunt, and we've had educators throughout our throughout our family as well. Now, I've got two brothers and grew up in a house of three boys too. Uh, be honest with me, who's the best athlete? For you? <laughs> Well, <laughs> who was the best athlete? Who was the toughest? <laughs> um, I'm not the one I'm supposed to be. I'm gonna be the other. <laughs> no, my I I'd say that um, I say my younger brother was probably the best athlete of all of us. You know, he had all kinds of Division One basketball scholarships to some big schools. Had some big school offers in football as well. Um, um, you know, my older brother. I'm the smallest. I was kind of the run of the litter, if you will. But uh, my older brother is very athletic as well. But um, you know, he didn't get into he didn't get into football. Didn't want to do that. Um, you know, he played some basketball, but he really was good in track. He was a really good baseball player and ended up breaking his leg as a freshman and then got out in high school and then got out of that and then picked up a tennis racket and became very very um, very very good at that. Um, I was probably I don't know I, I'll say I was the toughest one, but I think I was just probably had the more of a, the nasty mean streak than my than my brothers did. 
um, being the smallest. But, um, but yeah, we were all pretty good. But I just have to say, if you say who was the best athlete, I'd have gave that to my late brother, my younger brother. Now, let me ask you, as far as football is concerned, do you remember what age you were or what, what time in your life that you went, wow, this, this game of football, this is my thing? Yeah, I, I, was, about, I was about six. And um, the story goes that, you know, I was, we were in Detroit. We used to go up to, we used to go Thanksgiving. We'd always meet up in Detroit or my house or down in Steubenville at Winters, Ohio with bunches of family, my, my family and my uncles and their children. And um, yeah, we were watching the, watching the Chicago Bears and Detroit Lions on Thanksgiving Day. And um, I do remember this. I remember people, if you go way back, um, well, they went into overtime and they, and, they, and they kicked off. And I remember I loved Walter Payton and they kicked off and Eddie Payton, Walter's brother, returned the kick during overtime return to open and kick in overtime back for touchdown and the game ends and I remember looking at my dad and he told the story best but I told my dad I said that's what I want to do I want to play ball and my dad said well that's cool but what else you want to do and I said nothing that's it <laughs> he said well you have to you have to do something else you can't do that forever and I said oh I can I said I can I'll do it forever and you know but I was just a little kid and um so I've always wanted to be around it and, and then my, again, my dad was a coach. And so in order for me to be around him, and particularly in, in during training camp and two days, I had to go to practice because that's where he was at. And so, um, you know, I saw my dad doing it, um, running around with a whistle around his neck. Um, and so, and in the locker room with the guys. And, and so I just kind of um, matriculated to that, you know, Kent Roosevelt, you know, at the time, Kent was a small town and, and um, everyone knew everyone. And my idols were like guys like Harold Brown ended up playing at Ohio State. And um, he was one of the, you know, premier, I think he was a parade, all American number one radio runner back in the country, played for my dad. And, and um, so some of my fondest memories were right there at Kent Rosewood High School up at that stadium, you know, with, with Coach Nemec and who's, um, who, who, who ended up coaching me, but was also, I've known him since I was, I think, eight. So, you know, and he's still very close to me to this day. So that's kind of been ingrained. Um, that's, that's kind of what's been, but I've been around and, and some of the finest men I've ever known have been coaches. Do you have one or two memories that are your fondest memories with your father? Oh, I got, I mean, my goodness, I got a bunch, you know. Um, yeah, I remember, um, you know, standing, I don't know if you remember, but guys would hit those sleds and push those sleds. And I would stand, my dad would stand on the sled and I'd stand in front of him. And I'd hold on to these bars and he'd kind of straddle them behind me so I didn't fall off the dang thing. And um, I remember like, yelling and barking stuff like I was doing something, thought I was, but I obviously wasn't. But, um, you know, but some of the fondest things I remember my dad, you know, every, um, I don't know, all season, every uh, Saturday morning, we'd get up, we'd go downstairs and I don't know why we'd always go, we'd go in the basement and we'd watch, we'd watch cartoons and westerns and and uh, that was just he and i's time you know and um, i just wanted to be around him. if he was out raking leaves in the fall i wanted to be with him so i'd go out and rake leaves really mess them up and jump in them but um but you know we, we, yeah i know right um you know i remember you know my senior year we ended up probably my senior year we we moved to colorado from ohio and i had and i wanted no part of it and um when i was a junior in high school had grown up in kent didn't want to leave before my senior year. My dad took a job. Um, he was assistant principal at a high school, but he took a job in Colorado, like I said, as, as the uh, director of personnel and to the central office. And we made the move and I didn't want to go. But I remember he got me on a plane. I'd never been on a plane before. I was 17 years old. And he and I flew to Colorado. And I had never been, I had never been west of the state line, you know, in Indiana, even in the Indiana. And we fly all the way out to Colorado, just he and I, and we we're there for two days. And um, that that's one of my fondest memories because we just it was just us us two. And, you know, you grew up with brothers as well. You're always fighting for time. You know, you're fighting for individual time, and and um, and you get it when you take it wherever you can get it. And and so that was that was I remember it was two days just he and I. And um, you know when he was and, and we talked about so many different things. Um, 
you know, another one, there's a couple more, but another one that stands out um, was probably 14, 15 years ago. We were in Jamaica <laughs> and uh, at a cousin's wedding. We're coming back from the golf course and he, uh, my dad looks over at me and I don't even remember what we were really talking about, John, but he says, and he says, you know, everything I've ever done in any decision I've ever made in my life, um, I did what I thought was in your best interest and in your, in you and your brother and your mother's best interest. He goes, you may not have always liked it, but everything I've ever done is what I thought was best for you boys at that time. And, you know, I said, okay. And, and, um, about 30 seconds later, I look over to, I look to my left and he's over there and he falls asleep. <laughs> and I, um, I do, I remember I patted him on his leg, and not hard enough to wake him up, but I patted him on the leg and I just nodded and I said, yeah, I know. And I said, I trust you and I believe in that. And then, um, you know, among other things, but one of the last ones was just before he passed away, 10 years ago, pancreatic cancer. We were in his hospital and he says to me, we were talking and we were talking about my sons and, you know, his grandsons. And, and he said, um, well, if you want to be close to, you know, you and I are really close. I said, yeah, and my dad's like my best friend. You know, he was my hero and my mentor. And he said, well, if you want to be close to your kids like me and you are when you're 41, you need to be close to them when they're five or when they're six. And, and that resonated, that stuck. Um, so those, I mean, there's, I mean, my goodness, I could tell you stories upon stories of, of memorable moments with my dad. I mean, I was very fortunate to have my dad. He, um, my dad was a, became a surrogate father for so many other guys, some of my friends to this day that, that, they would come stay with us and they might stay for two weeks, might stay for two days, might stay for a month. And I just thought they were just hanging out. But what was really going on is they were getting kicked out of their homes because they had, they had issues going in their own homes and some of them didn't have fathers around. And, and so my, my dad and my mom were serving as parents to them and, and I didn't get it at the time. But here I am now and, and I got buddies of mine now to this day are like, man, your mom and dad, and they saved me. And um, they were like, they was like my dad. Um, and so... Yeah, that's, that's, but that's what I know. I mean, my dad was a, my dad was a, was a man's man. He was a father to a lot of people. And, and so I was very fortunate to have him. Dude, you, you are very blessed, man, to have had a dad like that. Uh, Cause not a lot of guys, you know, have that. How did your dad influence you as a father and a husband? Oh, my dad was very, um, my dad was very black and white, wasn't in gray area. Um, he was very clear and concise in his messaging. This is what I want. This is how you go do it. Um, um, I think as I got older, you know, and, I, and I'd say, you know, and I had to make some, you know, as, you, as, as kids grow up, they got to start making decisions on their own. Some of them are hard decisions. And I'd say, well, dad, what do you think? You know, and, and he would say, I don't know, what do you think? You know, and I, and I said, well, I'm, that's why I'm asking you. And he'd give me the positives and the negatives. And then he'd say, so what do you think you should go do? And I didn't get it at the time, but it, what he was doing is he was, um, he, he was forcing me to think on my own and, 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 and to kind of wade through my own thought processes to come up with what I thought was best. And, and um, it's invaluable, you know, it's invaluable. And, and, I, and I know, but I also know that if I was going to completely go off the rails, he was going to say, no, you're going to do it this way, you know, but um, <laughs> so that's kind of influenced me a lot the way I treat my own kids, um, you know, very, but it's very clear, very concise messaging. Um, you know, my dad used to, die, you know, I think I said earlier that my dad was my best friend, but he wasn't when I was younger. And um, he would tell me that. And I tell my kids that um, I'm not here to be your friend. My dad was not there to be my friend. He was there to be my dad. He was there to be my mentor, and he was to be a disciplinarian. He was also there to be my 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 biggest fan and cheerleader. Um, he was also there to keep me grounded. Um, he was there to pick me up when I fell down, but he was also there to let me fall down, to learn how to get up. And um, and so uh, yeah, and so I think that's that. Well, I know that's that's how I am. You know, I used to say, "I'll never do that. I'll never talk like that to my kids. I'll never say that to my kids." And hell, I'm saying it every day. <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> so that's that's, that, that's you know, what we do. You know, we do, and um, you know, I'm thinking about some things. You know, as I'm talking to you, you know, I, you know, one of the one of the most important 
things that my father did for me. And, and I was angry now. When I was uh, 22, I got 21, 22, I got cut by the Denver Broncos. And, and um, you know, I wasn't a very good player and I ended up getting cut. And I, and I go home and I call and say, I'm coming home. And I go home and my dad is standing outside and he's cutting grass when I pull up. And um, my mom's standing there. My mom's crying. I'm thinking, yeah, well, she's crying because she knows I'm upset because this is my life, my childhood dream. And, and my dad says, so how you doing? I said, great. And he said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm going to wait for my agent to get me hooked up and try to go back and play somewhere. And he said, okay, well, that's good. You got 24 hours to get out. So don't unpack. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you don't have a degree, so you can't stay here. And he goes, I know what your signing bonus was. I know what you made during training camp. You can't stay here. And I remember I, I walked and I, I kind of looked at him sideways and I walked in the house. And I said, well, I said, what the hell's wrong with him? So what, he's pissed at me and I got cut. I was like, that's crazy. And my mom was like, no, you idiot. He knows that if he doesn't, if you don't go back to school now, because I, I, I didn't like school. But he, she knew and he knew that if I didn't go back right away, I may never go back. And, and, uh, but he also knew that I wasn't going to go out and get a real job either because <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't <laughs> how I was built, you know? And um, so he knew I'd go back to where I was comfortable. And, and my comfortable space was back at Colorado State, back at school. And, and um, the next morning I got up and I went back to school and finished my degree. And, and, but my mom would tell me later that was the hardest thing they ever had to do was tell me to leave. But it was also the dude, best thing. Dude, I love that. Because me personally, I tell you, I struggle. I, I give my girls advice most of the time, sometimes unsolicited probably, when I should be literally asking them questions to help, help them kind of process the decisions that they make. Because we all want to be fixers, right? As men, we want to be fixers. We want to fix stuff. Well, that's right. I was going to say that. Yeah. yeah. We're fixers. We, we, we want to make things right, right? That's right. And then, and, and, um, and I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I've got an 18 year old son who, like, God bless him. I love him to death, man. That's my guy. But my goodness, I want to jump down his neck half the time. But, <laughs> um, but we want to fix everything and we want to tell them do it this way and versus let them process it. And what do you, how do you think you should do it? Um, you know, and, and, and um, that, that's hard. That's hard. But I was fortunate to have, I had a great model. I had a great model of how to do it and what to do. And I'm not saying I'm great at it. I'm not by, by any stretch. And, you know, if anybody, you know, I hear people say, man, you're just like your dad. And that's, which to me, that is the biggest compliment that I could ever, ever have. When someone says I'm like my dad. Dude, that's cool. I yeah. love it, man. And that, that is such an amazing thing. What, what he instilled in you and the confidence he's given you and, and just that, that legacy, right? That incredible generational legacy thing that you can pass down for, to your sons and, and that they're going to pass down. Was there something he said that you'll always remember? Oh my God. I mean, how many things you want me to go into? I mean, um, my dad told me he loved me. And, and that sounds trivial and it sounds like not a big deal. But I, but here I am now, I'm 51 years old, and I, and I ask a lot of my players when I'm recruiting guys, and I'll say, you know, and, and um, has a man ever told you they loved you? And the kids are like, I've never had a man tell me that. I had a recruit down in Florida once. I was talking to my son on the phone, and he, he, was, he was just sitting there, and the phone rang, and, and I didn't answer because I was meeting with a recruit. But the, then it rang again, and I didn't take it. It rang a third time. I'm like, damn, this must be important. <laughs> it was my oldest son and I pick it up and I'm like what's going on and I don't even remember what it was but we're talking a little bit and um you know he was like a freshman in high school I think and um we talked about some things for a couple minutes and at the end of the conversation I said okay well I love you and he said I love you too and I hung up no big deal that's how we end every conversation and the kid looked at me and goes did you just tell your son you loved him I said well yeah and he said I've never had anyone I've never had a man tell me that and and I remember looking at the kid and I said, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you. And, and that's awful. And um, so, yeah, my, my, and so when I say you asked me what did my dad told me that always stood out, that stood out. That stood out. Um, you know, I told you when he said to me that everything I do and have done is 
been for what I what I thought was best for you. That stood out among other things. You know, we've had um, you know numerous conversations just about how to do things. You know, and, and I remember I was was doing some stuff I shouldn't have been doing. It was when I was a junior in high school, and he looked at me and he said, "Hey." Um, you know, can I say what I was doing? <laughs> You're not on this talk podcast. But, <laughs> you I don't know, know but, bro. You know, well, I, well, I was, I was young, I was young and dumb, and I, and I, I was trying some, trying to, trying some stuff I shouldn't have been trying. And he, uh, I didn't think he knew. And he says to me, he would. I mean, I was like, a, I think I was 16, and we're driving down the street. And he just looks at me, and goes, "Hey," and I said, "Yeah, well, let me ask you something." I said, yes, sir. And he said, um, when are you going to stop doing this? And before I could answer, he said, now think before you answer. He said, because son, you know me. If I, if I ask you a question, I already, I already know what's going on. And I, and I sat there quietly for about 10 seconds and I said, um, I guess I'll stop now. <laughs> and he said, that'd be a, he said, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> and that's all he, he never said another word about it. Um, we never discussed it again. I never did it again. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, that's just, the re- you know, I had so much respect for my dad and, and what, and here's what he really did for me too. You know, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. He placed other men in my life that could speak to me as if he was, because there were certain things that I just wasn't going to take from my dad because I was like, oh, that's just my dad. And it's the same tired story about my, you know, from my dad, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do this. But then there were all these other men that were placed in my life that would give me the same message and I would take it as the gospel. And I didn't realize it until I became a father that everything that happened, he was, he was, he was like chess pieces, placing people in front of me um, to help me succeed, to help me grow. And, and and so that's something that's one of the things I've really taken from you know you met you know you talked to my neighbor that one day you know the other night and when you and I were speaking and um, he's a guy that I use because I know the message you know I know the messaging that's going to happen and I don't have to prompt him you know I know and so I so I think you know we let our kids make decisions and process things but we also put people in place in places and, and strategically place people in front of them that, that um, along that was along that path that that can help them. The, the message that I think many men need to hear from this conversation is that he said he loves you and you tell your sons that, and there's nothing wrong with that. The, the issue oh. that what I see with so many men is they think somehow that's going to make their kids soft or, oh some kind of other jacked up thing that that society has told us right no. and so your boys man to hear i love you i'm proud of you i believe in you to hear those affirmations dude that does that does nothing there's nothing greater than that not for me it's not. Man to hear from a dad right i agree now that again that doesn't mean i'm don't, don't jump down the throat now but there's there's one constant my dad was my, my dad was hard on us I mean, he, he was, he pushed us now and, and I, and I push my kids and sometimes I feel like maybe I push them too hard at times, but then I'm like, but no, I'm not because I'm doing this from a place of love. And they know that, and they know that one, because I tell them, but two, I show them that the best that I can, um, you know, they say, Hey, I know you might not be happy with me, but and what I said to you is what I'm doing, but understand I'm doing this because I love you. I don't listen. I, 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 I've gone to college. I got my degree. I played ball. I'm good. But this is what you say you want. I'm trying to help you achieve the things that you say you desire. And and no one ever said love was soft. You know, you you look you know, and I'm not I'm not the most uh, biblical guy, but you know, it's all through the Bible they talk about love. But all through the Bible, there's also a bunch of war and a lot of people dying. Right, <laughs> and so. Um, Love doesn't have, love's not soft. Love, love's hard. Love can hurt. There's a thing called tough love. And, and, and so love can hurt sometimes too. And, but, but I think that um, if your children know that, that, that it's where, where it's coming from, 
the 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 work for it, the work for you. Dude, tell me what's been your biggest struggle as a dad, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, you know, I, I just being away, you know, and and not being as present all the time as you'd like to be. Just you know, the, the job that I have doesn't uh, doesn't afford me to be home a lot, and particularly during the season um, and during recruiting. Um, so that's a struggle. Um, and then again, you know, we always want to be fixers and, and, um, that can be, that, that, that's hard. And, and to watch your kids struggle is really, really hard. Um, to watch them not have success is really, really hard, but it's also necessary. And, and, um, you know, I, I say this all the time that I, that I think every kid needs to get punched in the nose. Every kid needs to ride his bike and fall off and skin his knee. Every kid needs to go and get beat in, in basketball or baseball. Every kid needs to get hit with a pitch, <laughs> you know, and figure out that, you know, it did kill you. You'll be okay. Um, I mean, it hurts. You don't want to see him hurt, but it's, you're going to be okay. Um, and that's been the hardest thing. And, and um, we all want our kids to be happy. We want to see smiles on their faces. And that's not the, that's, that, that's, that's, that's not the world that we live in either. And, and it's a grind. And, and so one of the things for me is to continue to say, Hey man, this, you know, you got, you got to go, you got to work at this. Um, but they also have to mean, you've talked about this. They also have to do it in their time. And I may want something for them and I want it now. Cause that's just how I, I, want, I mean, I want it right now. Um, but I can't want it worse than they do. And a lot of times we just have to sit back and understand that they're going to do things in their time, just as I did. Um, but, but so that's, that's probably been my biggest struggle is, is time, you know, my, my, my physical time with them, but then time of, I want you to do it right now. I want you to get this and work right now. And, and, but if they're not ready for that, you can't push that and you can't make them want it. You know, you can't want it for them more than they want it for them. Yeah. And that's what, I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think too, you know, I run into the same thing because I travel some. And I think what it does for you is it makes you appreciate the time you are at home. And, and the biggest piece is really about being intentional with that time. So being intentional when you are home to make sure you are spending quality time with your kids. You got to be intentional. As you said, intentional is the right word. It's a great yeah, word. Absolutely. And I can be so much better. And I, and I, and I can be some, cause I want to text a recruit or, and, and, you know, what, what's next. And, and, um, so you gotta, and, and I can do better. There's no doubt. I can still do better. Hey brother, all of us can do better, man. <laughs> For sure. We can all improve on, on that piece of uh, fatherhood. So I know, um, since the NFL, and your trials at NFL, kind of walk us through your coaching career and how that all came together for you. Yeah, so um, 93. Yeah, so I got done, my last year in college was 90, 1990. Um, 91 ended up getting cut. I went to the World League. 92, I was out. Um, just kind of working out and finishing up my degree and things like that. In 1993, I um, was a volunteer coach at Fort Collins High School in Col Fort Collins, Colorado, and I was working on my master's um, 1994. So a year later, I went to Lake Wales High School down in Polk County, Florida, which is, I don't know if you've ever been to Polk County, Florida, but it's like in the middle, it's in the orange groves, right in the, like just south of Orlando, it's, there's nothing there, you know. Um, so I was there for a year, but I just, you know, I was a high school teacher. And, uh, but I had this yearning desire to coach at the collegiate level. And, um, so I went to Mount Union, then I, the following year, I was at Mount Union College, which is Division three school. It's a powerhouse, one of the best, you know, most uh, winningest schools of all time in college football, really in the 90s, up to even through now, in Alliance, Ohio, just, you know, about 30 minutes south of where I grew up. And um, so I was there for a year. Then I went to Kent State. My dad had played and I grew up. Um, I was there for a year, and then I went to Iowa State. And so in 19, uh, I guess it would have been 97, I was at Iowa State. Had moved four times in four years. Um, I was at Iowa State in Ames, Iowa for four years. Went to University of Washington for a year. 
came back to Iowa State for five years. Um, then I went to University of Louisville for two. And I was at Notre Dame for six. And now I'm going on my sixth season here. So we've moved around quite a bit, <laughs> you know. And, <laughs> and, and, and my wife's been great as far as uh, that goes. And, you know, my sons are very transient dudes. And, um, and um, but they've made it work. And this, this is all they know. So my, my sons are, have been able to, to move and, 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 and make fast friends. I think it's gotten, you know, the older they get, the harder it is. Um, so we've been fortunate that, you know, my last, my gosh, I'm going on 12 years, my last 12 years of coaching in college football has been a, a complete dream. And um, I've been very, very fortunate. I won't use the word lucky, but I use the word fortunate um, to work with some great guys and great players and the staffs I've been on. And I've learned so much from every place I've been and in unbelievable universities. Um, some of the, the most world-renowned universities and football programs and all and all the sports. And um, so I've been very fortunate. Now, who was the head coach at Notre Dame when you were there? Well, I st- when I went, Charlie Weiss was there. And uh, well, I was there for one season with him, and then we got fired. And then Brian Kelly came in, and, re- and he had just come in from University of Cincinnati. Um, so I was with Charlie for one year, and then Brian Kelly uh, retained me. Um, I was the only coach that they kept off that staff, and I was there with him for five. And then um, came over here with Urban Meyer at Ohio State, and I had played for Urban. Urban was our receiver coach. I played for the great old Bruce, who's a, who's a legendary coach and Hall of Fame coach, and became like a, almost like a second father to me. Um, like I said, that story, my dad told me to go back to college, back to school. I couldn't stay home. Well, he had already talked to Coach Bruce and said, listen, I'm going to throw his ass out, and you got to pick the pieces up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, the, it, this goes to show you the respect I had for Coach Bruce when um, – when, when Urban gave me the opportunity to come to Ohio State, I originally was going to say no. And um, I was driving, Trina and I were driving to go pick up my, my two youngest boys from elementary school. And I get a phone call from Coach. And he says, he, you know, he's an old gruff old man now. He says, he says, Tony, this is Coach. I'm like, yeah, I, I know. And he says, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to pick up my kids from school. And he says, oh, damn it. What are you doing? Did, did Urban offer you the job? And I said, yes, sir, he did. He goes, well, what are you doing? I said, I don't know, I got to think it over. And he goes, well, let me help you. Stop thinking. This is on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> he said, "He said you stop thinking, Tony job. Alfred. He, well, he said, no, he didn't say take the job. He said, you stop thinking. You get your ass to Columbus because this is family and I'll see you Sunday. Do you understand me, son? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, okay, bye. And he hung up. And Trina, it was on speakerphone, and Trina looked at me, and she said, so I guess we're moving. And I said, yeah, I guess so. And that's how much, that's how much I revered what that man said. And, um, and like I said, when I, any, any major move that I would make in my life, I, I talked to my dad. You know, that was the guy that I talked to. Any move that I made, I talked to him when he had since passed. Then the next guy I would talk to was my younger brother. Well, he had passed away too. And so kind of was, I was kind of in flux for a couple of years. I was a mess. I really was. I didn't, um, you know, I didn't have people that I could felt that I would, could really go and grab onto. Um, um, and so I, I, I was kind of floundering around for a little while in that, in that period. And one of the guys, you know, my, my cousin Jared's a guy that I confide in. Um, you know, Kevin Verdugo is another one that I played with, and, and then you met my friend Anthony. And but at the time, Coach Bruce said, "Hey, here's, here we go," and and I took that as okay. That's that's you know. He said, "What would your dad say?" Yeah, well, that's what we were gonna do. And um, so yeah, so I've I've been like I said, I've, I've been fortunate. I've had some really good dudes around me. Man, you guys have had some tremendous success there at Ohio State, and I know you've coached some some stud running backs, some very talented running backs. What's one of your greatest memories there at Ohio State so far? Oh, at Ohio State. Oh, wow, there's been a lot. Um, you know, um, J.K. Dobbins, I don't know if you watched much of our games, but when J.K. Dobbins sprinted down the right sideline, and he, and he basically dunked on the guy from the team up north. We don't say that M word here, so the team <laughs> up north is – those guys <laughs> those guys but um yeah that was probably one of my fondest memories just 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 beating them up but um I've had so many you know and um 
you know, our, 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 you know, that, that win that we had against them in 2016 and then the win again, 2000, I think it was 17. Yeah. 17 against Penn state at home in, 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 in the horseshoe was some of my fondest memories. And, um, you know, um, you know, my, actually the first big 10 championship that we won that, that, that when I was here and having my sons in the locker room with me, that was, that to me was unbelievable. And, and, um, just having them come down on the field and, and then come in the locker room with me after the game and, you know, winning's hard. I mean, winning is really, really hard and to win a championship at any level, um, is really hard. And, and, and my boys are able to be there and come in the locker room after, which is really, it's, it's a pretty cool deal. Dude, those are memories your boys are never going to forget. That is so cool. I can't even imagine uh, being, you know, having that experience and growing up and being around Ohio State University and the football players and everybody that's come through there. Yeah, you know, we've been, you think about, you know, it was really cool. Zeke Elliott, who I just texted, we were texting back and forth today, this earlier today, actually. You know, he made a phone call last um, August and just to tell my, my my one son was in eighth grade playing eighth grade football and he called him just to tell him good luck before his game you know and um you know tj jones and, and played many years for, you know with the lions and and you know, theo riddick who's now with the broncos was with the lions jk dobbins who's one of my players just getting ready to go into the draft who's almost like he's like another son to me you know the relationships that those guys have with my children is unbelievable and um but my kids don't look at them as some superstars they really don't they just kind of look at well that's zeke and well that's jk and big deal you know because that's what they know and that's what they've grown up around and those guys are um they're just regular guys to them and and to me and, and the train as well they're 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 our boys those are our dudes and um they're not treated in some sort of superstar they're, they're treated just like my own sons if you're acting like a clown you're gonna be told to act like a clown you know, and when you're doing well, you're, you're going to be told you're doing well and, and, and told that we love you and um, we care about you. And, and um, those are the type of relationships that, that um, hopefully will last forever. And my sons one day will hopefully look back and say, you know, that was, that was, that was pretty neat. Dude, I got to ask you because, you know, I'm here in Dallas and there's a little bit of a fan base here for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, what's your favorite Zeke Elliott story? Mm. My favorite Zeke Elliott, well, uh, dog, there's two. I'll give you two. So, you know, we're, 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 uh, we're, we're playing, I don't know who we're playing, we're playing in the game. And Zeke used to wear that crop top jersey. And, and, and they came up with a rule that they made him pull. Everyone has to pull the jersey down. Well, Zeke comes out and he's got his jersey up. And I'm standing next to him. The official walks up and says, Zeke, you need to pull your jersey down. Zeke doesn't respond to him. The guy says it three times. He's looking dead in his face. Then that, and he doesn't respond again. And Zeke proceeds to start dog cussing this Ralph. I mean, just cussed him out. And I kind of got in front of him. And I said, the official said, I got him. I got him. And um, I turned around. I said, what are you doing? Because we walked away. And I said, what are you doing? And he started laughing. He started laughing. He goes, ah. I just want to see if he's going to really make me do it or not. He's scared. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know? And then uh, we refer to Jersey. Now we went on about the business. And, but we were, um, Zeke turned 21 and, and we had a, and his birthday was in July and we had a um, team workout, a team run at like early in the, it was an early morning run. And he had, gone out and did what 21 year olds do before their 21st on their 21st birthday and so we had to go get him if you know it, like we sent the intern over there to go get him from his apartment and he comes over there and he's late so we just start running him i mean i mean we're gonna run him until he until he drops well we just keep running him and running him and he's making all his times and he turns and he says <laughs> he starts yelling at the strength coach he says you can't break me. He goes, I'll run here all day and I'll make every time. Well, finally, the guy says, okay, last time, last run. He finishes the run, never stops. 
and runs into the facility and just kept running all the way through the facility into his car and the walked our intern and said, come, come on. He just said, come on, let's go. And, they, and he ran back, got in the car and went home. It never missed a time, but it was stone cold drunk. <laughs> stone cold. He's one of those old school, but no, I got all kinds of things with Zeke, but Zeke's, um, Zeke's a great kid. He's, he's a, he's a great kid and he's an unbelievable talent. Um, you know, I'm so proud of him. He's growing up and, and he's doing, you know, he's doing great. You know, I had dinner with him. The last time I had dinner where I was actually in Dallas last June, I had flown down for a couple of days and, you know, I went to dinner and, and got to hang out a little bit. And, um, you know, I'm really, I'm really proud of him, man. He's become, you know, you got, you got other guy, Jalen Smith down there, you know, and, uh, you know, I was able to coach Jalen at uh, Notre Dame. And, um, so they're all, those are, you got some great kids down there, phenomenal football players, but they're, but they're good people. Hey, bro, as we wrap up, man, tell me, what does football teach these kids about being a man? I think it teaches so many things like lessons. You know, you, you, this isn't about you. And, and, and understanding, not just in football, but life, this isn't about you. Um, it's about a brotherhood. It's about team. It's about us. Um, you're going to get knocked down. You got to get up. And there is no finger pointing. Just fix it. Whatever's going on, fix it. And and to play this game, especially here at this place, you 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 better be extremely selfless. And you have to be selfless. And and the other thing that I talk about all the time is with, with our players is the ability to leverage their influence. And and not just them, but me, you, um, Joe Blow across the street, whatever. Leverage your influence, meaning that, that every single day we have an opportunity to influence somebody or bodies, plural. How you do that's up to you. And it may be just a kind gesture of, hey, how you doing? Um, a pat on the back, a smile of affirmation, um, or you can tear them down too. But it's up to you how you influence others. And, 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 I, and I tell our players here at Ohio State, you have such an amazing platform. You have an amazing, amazing platform to deliver whatever it is that you so choose to deliver. So why not use it well? And, and lastly, your name, what's your name? And, I, and so I have this band on my wrist and it has my last name and, and has your name, your brand. And, I, and all my nephews have it and my sons have it. So every male, the last name I offered, got it. I had it made and because I'm so big into what's your brand? What does your name stand for? When you, John, when you say, the, the car Bentley, when you say Bentley, something comes to mind is that the, 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 that name, the car name Bentley is synonymous with something. Is it success? Is it prestige? Is it whatever it is, rich, wh whatever that is. And so my, my question to my players, my question to my own sons, my question to you, to anybody listening to me, what's my name synonymous with? What is John Finch? What does that name what resonates when people say your name? Because something's coming to mind. The cool thing is you get to determine what that is. And every single day you get to be intentional building your own personal brand and your, and your brand is your name. And, you're, you, and, and so I challenge my players, I, 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 uh, I challenge my own children to, to build your brand. And because the, the best resume you have is a name on your back. What are you gonna do with it? And, um, and, it's, and it's not about what I want Ryden or Braden or Cotter. It's not about what I want it to stand for. It's not, I, I, I'm good. I, I've done mine. What do they want it to stand for? And then whatever that is, then you go, you be intentional about working to make it whatever it is you want it to be. And, 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 I, and, I, and I talk the same way to my players, if that makes sense. Wow, that's good stuff. So, bro, I'm going to ask you one last question. What piece of advice if a new dad's sitting in front of you and he says hey coach give me one game-changing piece of advice what would you say to him wow again make sure your kids know you make sure your kids know you love them unconditionally unconditionally i didn't say you had to like them all the time <laughs> but you gotta love them and but they have to know that you love them um and not because that's what you say but you have to show that, you know, words are nothing. Words mean absolutely nothing. Show it. 
and, and how you show that is up to you. Again, it's, again, it goes back to that leveraging your influence, but um, let your kids know every day that you, that you love them unconditionally. Let them know every day you're going to push them to be elite. You're going to push them to, to do things that, that, that they can't see and they can't see for themselves. They don't know what's out there. They, they don't know what's out here. We do as adults, we know. And, and, and so push them to be elite, let them know you love them um, and listen. I think that, and I can do so much better, but I would say that if we just listen to our kids, they'll tell us a lot, they'll tell us a lot. If we're not always fast to fix and fast to answer, if we just listen to them, we, we can gain a lot of information that, 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 uh, that we can assist our kids with with being great. Brother, uh, there's, there's so much good stuff in that, in, in what you said, and so much of what I think so many dads need to hear. And, uh, and I know you're super busy, man, and, and you don't do a lot of these types of interviews. So, dude, I greatly appreciate you. Oh, I appreciate you having me on, man. I, I probably need to do more of this. You know, I, I think um, this, has been, this has been good for me because it makes me think and, and, it, and it's, it's helping me to kind of realize again, to recalibrate a little bit and, and self-reflect on, you know, I'm saying do these things, but okay, are you actually doing them? You know, and, and, and so it's, it, this helps me as well. And um, I don't know, hopefully someone else has benefited from our conversation. And, and, but I appreciate, you know, we've been talking about doing this for about a year now. So I, I appreciate you even, I'm, I'm flattered that you even asked me to come on. Dude, I have greatly enjoyed our uh, our conversations on the phone, man, and and I greatly appreciate you, brother, and uh, I look forward to to watching you guys this year and seeing how it all plays out, man. And, and I've been watching you guys. I've been seeing you on the sidelines doing your thing. I hope God, I'm not I've embarrassing been... my mom's good name, right? <laughs> <laughs> Acting up, or you don't know, say anything bad, but. But no, it, it, it's been good. Things are good. And, um, you know, I have my health. My family has their health. And, you know, especially through these trying times, my, my, mom, my mom's doing well. And um, so we're very fortunate and we're blessed. And, and um, you know, I'm just hoping that, that uh, we get through these, these rough times here. You know, I think, that, again, though, but if we continue to stay together as, a, as people, we'll, 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 this too shall pass and we'll get through this thing it's as, hard as, it, as hard as it is right now. And, you know, as I started, I finished that, that again, I just want to, really say thank you to the to all the people that are out there on the front lines just saying helping out and and not just to them but to their families as well because that's that's scary now that's a scary time and um so really you know to god speed to them and really appreciate everything that they're doing for us to keep us healthy amen amen brother hey so how can guys connect with you on social media i i know on twitter right you know <laughs> yeah twitter's the best twitter obviously um, that's really the best way. I mean, my, uh, you know, I have an Instagram account, but I couldn't tell you how to use it. You know, my <laughs> my youngest son is the one that's telling me how to use the dang thing. I'm like, I have no idea. Um, you know, recruiting wise, I, should, I, I obviously that's embarrassing because I should know how to use it because that's how young kids are communicating anymore. And I refuse to do Snapchat. I'm just I can't do that. But um, yeah. you know, and I'm damn sure not getting on TikTok. You know, <laughs> that's not happening. Yeah. But, That's the uh, other one. <laughs> no, there's not a chance, bro. No, not a chance. But um, yeah, Twitter's the best way to hit me up and and um, to reach me and um, and I and, and I do I, I I challenge anyone to do that and I'm generally pretty good at getting back to people. Um, you know, I, I really am, um, and particularly if they kind of brief me as to what this is, where it's coming from from this from this podcast, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be as intentional as I can. Especially, we got some time. I mean. I mean, a whole again. I sit anywhere. around. I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I think my wife and kids probably want to throw me out, but you know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah. So anybody, if I if I can be of any assistance, anybody, I certainly will try to do that the best that I can. Hey, once again, bro, I, I greatly appreciate you, man. When you come to Dallas next time, don't be coming to Dallas without no doubt. Contact yeah, we got to get me? together, man. <laughs> But no, I, but when I get to Dallas, whenever that may be, I will certainly look you up. And if you're ever in Columbus, man, I'd love to show you around, bring you over to the facility, show you around, and um, come maybe come in to take a, get taken a game one day. Dude, this place is electric. This place is electric on Saturdays now. I have never been to a Big Ten game, brother. I'm going to tell you what, our place is, um, I'm biased. It's the best place in the country for, for college football. Our fan base is unbelievable. 
and, and they love their Buckeyes and um, yeah, we know, we know how to do it. Dude. Greatly appreciate you, man. Again, I can't say enough how much I appreciate you. And we'll catch up again soon. Thank you so much and appreciate your time. And um, God bless you, man. Thank Take you, care. Bro.